Okay, we're here at the test bench. One of them, anyway. Um, okay, so I just had a client come in, and uh, he was concerned that his amp was not getting enough input voltage. Okay, so it's it's frustrating to try to explain this to people because the industry in unison has all lied to people. They just lie to you, and you don't know any better. And so, you know, you just go with whoever has the best numbers. Okay, so... I tell you this information because I want you to learn and I want you to realize what they're really saying. Listening to a lot of these companies is like listening to a politician. You have to understand what they're referencing rather than understanding it through what your vocabulary is, right? The two are different. Uh, you know, these are educated people and they have a different set of rules and they have a different set of um, understanding and they have a, a, usually a different definition of things. And so you have to understand where they're coming from and what they mean. Some people like politicians will say one thing, but they really mean something else. But that's why that's how they're able to get away with lying and the police are able to get away with killing you and things like that. So uh, as far as uh, electronics go, uh, this right here is my classic uh, OSC2 uh, signal generator from the Rockford's, I think this is the first attempt, their second attempt was uh, connecting punch. They've always tried to make it in the accessories business and they've, they failed miserably. Just bad management. Those, those guys are just dicks. Um, uh, their third attempt was when they bought lightning audio when I worked for lightning audio. Uh, and technically I was a Rockford employee for like two weeks until I was like, fuck you guys. But, um, this is the OSC two. It runs off a uh, nine volts. So this is actually the cover is from the other one. I, I got them mixed up, but it's the, it's, they use the same boxes. So I just did a little hack from a little power supply that I got from Goodwill for a dollar. And uh, this thing is cute because it has the uh, pink noise generator uh, or the sine wave. I use the sine wave typically. And then I use the, usually the base one, which is the 20 hertz to 200 hertz. And then inside is a bunch of, you know, big resistor network. But anyways, my point is, uh, this one is, um, it is uh, 0.75 volts or 750 millivolts max and it can send an amp into full clipping um your amplifiers have a typical input impedance of about 10 kilo ohms sometimes 20 it depends on how they design it or whatever and uh uh the head units okay so here's the information i wanted to give you the head units there's a huge trend about having a four volt pre-out or five volt pre-out or even 12 volt pre-out you got to understand their numbers they're making that measurement from a certain impedance, just like an amplifier plays into a certain impedance and you get a certain output in watts, right? So <clears throat> when they say that they do a four volt preamp output, look at what the output impedance is at the load that is. Typically, it's anywhere from 50 to 100 ohms. It's nowhere near what your amplifier input is. So yes, it does do a four volt preout, but that's only at a 100 ohm load. So what does it do at 10,000 ohms or 20,000 ohms or what, you know, depending on, again, depending on what the input uh, input resistance is right there, your input impedance. Now, the way that you compensate for that is guess what they do. They put a little potentiometer, I forget which one is this anyways, uh, where is it at gain, base boost gain. So it's that one right there. So, uh, input level, blah, 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 you, you adjust it. And a lot of times they'll say on there, uh, yeah, see, even this one says it, um, six volts, right? Right. If so, if you have a really strong, uh, head unit that puts out, let's say six volts, then you want to turn your gain, your input level all the way down. You understand? And if you have a weak, uh, RCA level, whatever, then you want to turn your gain all the way up. Uh, like if you have a 200 volt uh, or 200 millivolt, uh, focus, God damn it. Focus. There we go. Uh, and then if you even have high level speaker level input, guess what? It's right next to it because there typically it's just a resistor bank that it goes into and it knocks it down. So you're dealing with the same thing. So you understand. So I get, and I get frustrated with these guys because they go out there and preach like they know what the fuck they're doing and they don't. And then they go around blabbing, you know, like somebody comes in and says, oh, I have a newbie question. 
And they're like, oh, you need this and you need this and you need this. And no, you're, you're an asshole. Learn what the fuck you're supposed to be saying and doing rather than telling people what to do. So don't answer the question. That's, that's my advice. If you don't really know the answer and you don't really know what the fuck you're talking about, don't answer the fucking question. Say, Patrick at Robot Underground is fucking rad. He knows what to really say. Listen to him. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, but now with that information, now you can start listening to people, uh, especially douchebags that represent some sort of brand or some sort of company, and you can understand their doublespeak, what they're really saying. What's also funny is that you can also find out if they actually don't know what they're doing. And that was one of the reasons why I started Robot in the first place. I went into a stereo shop and uh, I didn't realize that they wouldn't know what the fuck they were talking about. When you go to a stereo shop, all they know is that, especially the sales guy, they just know that if they sell this amp, they make 50 bucks. So when you walk in, guess what they're going to try to sell you? That amp, right? Because they make 50 bucks. That's all they give a shit about. They don't give a shit about teaching you anything or, uh, or if they, they care about you. They don't care about you. They just want your money. And now it's sort of a, 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 a sort of a, they, they sort of made the mistake on their own, which is that typically a stereo store is in a high traffic location, meaning it's a high value, meaning that their rent is really high in order for them just to be there. So if their overhead is anywhere from 15, 20, even $30,000 a month, when you walk in there, guess what? They're not there to help you. They're there to take your money. So that's why I wanted to provide an alternative. I actually didn't even start out providing an alternative. I just was like, fuck, I got to find some real information and some real good stuff. And nobody was offering it. So I just started helping people and I still help people for free. We, I run Robot. It's a not-for-profit. It's not a business. But I want people to have good information. The problem with good information is lots of companies have uh, an agenda uh, which is making money, uh, granted, but they don't want you to know the truth uh, because then all of a sudden you go, hey, this company's full of shit and they just want my money. And there's a lot of companies out there like that that do that. Um, and they just try to sell you fluff. I forget the guy's name. It's like PS Audio or something like that. Uh, and that guy's just full of shit or any of the, you know, cable companies that tell you you got to have this conductor, or this conductor, whatever. You know, all the RCAs are the same, Right. Uh, all the, all the base knobs are the same. This is the, this actually happens to be the pack, uh, Pacific audio. What is it? Pacific parts. I forget what the pack one. There's actually two pack groups, but anyways, this is the famous LC one that everybody gets. And then they turn it into a little baby Yoda and charge you a hundred dollars or whatever bullshit. These are all the same too. The, in fact, if anybody wants to make a solution for me, um, I would love to categorize base knobs so that like, it'd be like, this is base knob A, B, C, D, E, or F. And it works with amps that use that same type of uh, interface because there's a couple of different interfaces. There's like RJ11, RJ45, um, which are typical phone connections. And then also they, um, sometimes it's a, a straight cable, meaning the conductors go straight through. Sometimes it's a flip cable where one side is flipped. Um, uh, and then, you know, there's, and then sometimes like on uh, the Ignite amps, one side is RJ11 and the other side is RJ, uh, was it RJ15, which is the six conductor. Some of them are six conductor. Some of them are four conductor. Again, there's no standards. Typically, if a company does any sort of planning, uh, they, they, they create what's called consumables, which is where, you know, like Sirwin Vegas run better now, but back in the day, like, or, or even if you take somebody like uh, JL Audio, especially, they make their stuff proprietary, so you have to go back to jail to buy that stupid base knob, which is terrible. Uh, but, you know, whatever. They, that, they're there for money. They're not there for you. So, but um, I think that's all I wanted to talk about was, uh, so when you read the specs on a head unit, make sure you understand what impedance it's going into. Now, that is good news, too, though. Um, a lot of times, especially like on uh, SSL amps, I love the SSL amps and the by the way, guys, Boss Group, uh, remember Tony DeMore of DeMore Engineering of Diamond Box fame and DS whatever Steve Mead designs, you know, doodads like that OSC2. Uh, Tony used to design for Boss. Boss does bigger numbers than Rockford and fucking uh, JL Audio. They move way more equipment. And um, there's about, Boss Group has about probably... 30 brands. There's like Audio Bank and uh, Boss, SSL, Planet Audio. 
uh, and several others. They all make great products, man. You just got to know how to use them. Now, does this little amp do 1500 watts? Fuck no. But it's a good amp. And you, you can usually tell by the fuse rating. So it does a 30 amp fuse. So it's good for about 300 watts. I would, you know, be that as a real conservative, but it does 300 watts. Um, this one, let's see if it has a, no, this one actually has a high level input and then RCA. Some of the boss amps, depending on what vendor they used, I like them because, um, uh, what was it? Like it'll have a switch like right here and you can switch it to either uh, low input or high input. And then that way you just chop off an RCA and then you can actually plug our uh, speaker level input into the RCA. You flip that switch and it pads it down and it works great into a factory system. So I think what I'm saying in general, which I've always said for over 25 years, do your fucking homework, read a book, take your time, try not to listen to people on the internet because they let anybody on the internet. Typically when you read a book, it has to go through, typically it has to go through a bunch of other people <clears throat> before it gets published. Nobody wants to publish a bullshit book. So especially look at older books and non self-published books. Uh, loudspeaker cookbook is great. Uh, in fact, I was in a couple of forums where they kicked me out because nobody had even read it. And then they were all getting onto audio bullshit and, uh, fluff, you know, like, Oh, here you go. Here's a magic cable. It's only five grand. It's on sale from 10 grand, right? It's half off. It's just copper. It's just and, and even if it's aluminum, it's fine too. But anyways, I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Uh, look for the, um, if you need stuff, just, just text me. Um, 602-312-6504. Um, we are pretty much caught up. There's an NS1 or yeah, NS1 18. That's on sale. I'll probably clear that one out for like 400 bucks. Uh, I did want to show you about the Sunfire motor. So this is the original Sunfire. This one is actually by TC Sounds. And you can tell that was their little sticker. Uh, the ones that were made by TC Sounds in uh, San Diego. So it's actually pretty basic. And then uh, as the brand, the Sunfire brand, from uh, originally from Bob Carver, uh, changed hands, they would normally go to China and then make it out of like uh, hot forged or stamped uh, top plates and bottom plates and things like that to save money. And you don't save much money, but when you're doing 10,000 units, it does save you, you know, at least $10,000. So, but this is our version, which is a, a larger diameter uh, magnet. And then this is the short version. And then we also do the triple stack version. So there's the 10 inch finished. You used to say Hyphonics um, on the back. Here's the triple stack version. And then we also have two versions, which is a thin, thin gap using a four layer uh, dual one ohm coil, which we then typically wire in series. And then we double up the leads. So that way it's a single two ohm and then your positive gets two leads and then your negative gets two leads. So this is actually the Sunfire one where uh, we use an eight layer coil in the larger gap version. And then I series all four coils uh, into, uh, so, to, so I get four ohm, which is what the Sunfire was. And then it's so funny, even the Sunfire one, they weird out if I put push terminals on there. So they want the, the stupid tabs on there because they don't know what to do when they get something improved. But anyways, uh, again, I love you guys. Oh, I wanted to show you the colors. So these are the colors from the powder house. So we also want to do a uh, wrinkle red because I think we got a wrinkle black. Yeah, we do the wrinkle black for Sunfire. And then we want to do a wrinkle red for um, the HCCA, the old HCCA made by TC Sounds, or I should say invented or developed by TC Sounds. Um, this is the improved uh, four spoke frame. Uh, a couple good things that it, it actually stacks easier without locking together, which is great. And then the other thing is that uh, it adds venting, uh, which looks more professional than me just drilling the side out. Um, I still have that many 10 inch frames from the Adire buyout back in 07 that require drilling. <laughs> so, but uh, that's, I think that's what I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. I love you. Uh, thank you for your support. And uh, again, keep Robot Underground secret. Just find uh, somebody that needs your help and then put yourself in between. And then that way you make a little commission and uh, you get to help somebody and they get a better deal than going to a shop. Uh, shops have already made their bed. They can lie in it. Fuck them. Later.